Uh, please welcome, as always, best of the business, Bruce Jackson. How's it going? Today we will be talking about the MLB playoffs because there are some division series games and series that are uh, that are getting out of hand. Getting out of hand. Very out of hand. It's definitely not what people have been expecting so far. Uh, I'm very, honestly, I'm very disappointed in Baltimore. I thought they were going to go way further than they ended up going. It's, you know, they couldn't even make it past their their original first round of the so, playoffs. It's Baltimore over. Um, it's Baltimore over. I was happy for them when I found out they were going to the playoffs, man. I mean, everybody was happy for them. They were kind of my favorites to not my favorites, but like (laughs) out of all the teams out of there, you know, I really wanted Baltimore to see. If you're an Orioles fan, I wouldn't be too concerned about getting swept because this season's a success. This is an incredible success. This team is the 2015 Cubs, the 2015 (laughs) Cubs just built up. Uh, incredible farm after being dog shit for like four years in a row. They were like the worst team in the MLB and they just built up an incredible farm and they kind of overperformed with like a young core. And then the next year they were the best team in baseball. Is that what you're predicting? Yes. You think the this Baltimore Orioles, Orioles team has built up an incredible young core. They still have the number one farm in baseball. They still have players coming up. I think next year the Orioles will be the best team in baseball. This is the precursor to some huge things to come next year for the Orioles. The AL East is going to be scary next year if the Yankees can produce and if the Red Sox can get better. The AL East went 0-7 in the playoffs. 0-7. Didn't win a single game. That was the undoubted silver lining of not making the playoffs this year was that every single team that talked trash about the Yankees and said, oh, y'all ain't shit, you know. They all lost. They all lost and got swept. The last time an AL East team won in the playoffs was last year in the ALDS when the Yankees beat the Cleveland Guardians to go on to the ALCS. So just pointing that fact out there. (laughs) But, okay, so the the Rangers, though, they're hot. They're so hot right now. That's five in a row against the teams with the two best records in the AL East. Beat the, and all on the, or the last game was at home, but... Four games on the road, they sweep all of them, and then they uh, take care of business at home in a game that wasn't even close, 7-1. Evan Carter is playing like the best player in baseball. This man is absolutely raking, taking hella walks. The play After playing 23 games in the regular season, rookie Evan Carter is absolutely going off for the Rangers. He's insane. He Insane. Can I get playoff-specific stats? I can. <laughs> Corey Seager hitting 429 so far, 680 on base. Josh Jung has eight hits. Mitch Gre- everyone's just hitting. Adolis Garcia has got two home runs. Jonah Heim is throwing people out. What one of the big controversies was in the first game, the Orioles lost three to two to the Rangers. They had the tying run on first, and uh, Gunnar Henderson was on first, and they wanted to do a hit and run with mm-hmm. Aaron Hicks, mm-hmm. and Aaron Hicks missed the sign. And yep. Jonah Heim absolutely gunned him at second. And that was it for, for game one. It's about right to hear from Aaron Hicks. No offense to Aaron Hicks. <laughs> but the, the 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 Rangers are just hitting and it's and their their pitching has produced other than like getting smacked around for eight runs in game two, which they won eleven to eight still. Other than that, their pitching has been great. Jordan Montgomery, yeah, lights J-Mo. out. They're they're just getting it done in every way possible. They are gonna have a little bit of waiting to do. Their next game, game one of the ALCS against to be determined. October, they got a little bit of a break, so they've got that advantage for them. October fifteenth. Here's what I'll say though: is having a break even that much of an advantage? I was gonna say that's the thing. All though, the like, teams that got buys are getting smacked around right like now. Like that, I was I was gonna say yeah. From an objective point of view, it is an advantage. You get to rest. You don't have to, you know, worry. Your your pitching gets rested up and everything like that. But at the same time, it's not just baseball, but it's uh, basically any sport that you come across, you know. When it comes to the playoffs, the playoffs are all about who's hot, you know. So this yeah. break could be something that actually ends up hurting them because their hot streak ends up, you know, fizzling out. I'm going to talk about another team that might get swept tonight. And I think there's there's just a really good chance that it happens. The L.A. Dodgers have completely laid an egg in their first two games against the Diamondbacks. The, the snakes are hot. 
The sna snakes are incredibly hot. Clayton Kershaw getting absolutely floored. Only recorded one out before being taken Has out of the game. Has an ERA of 167 this postseason. Yep. I mean, insane. Corbin Carroll is lighting the world on fire, and their pitching's getting it done, too. I mean, Arizona's pitching has come to play three runs, two runs, two runs, two runs in their, five, in their four games so far. All on the road, too. Now they're coming home tonight in front of what's going to be, I would assume, just an absolutely electric sellout crowd at Chase Field. And the Dodgers have Lance Lynn on the mound. I think it's over. I think I think the D-backs sweep. They're sweeping, you think? I think they're they're winning tonight. Braden, P P I don't know how to. Th they do have a uh, Arizona does have a pitcher that's three and nine with a five point seven ERA going tonight, but they'll get into the pen. They'll they'll get into the pen. Guys like Miguel Castro and Paul Seawall, the company, they'll they'll get some innings, and I think eventually, because I don't know, I think I think Arizona will light them up this game. That would undoubtedly probably be the most unexpected thing to happen this postseason is the fact that the Diamondbacks sweep the Dodgers. I picked the wrong six seed to win it all. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what happened. I thought that the Blue Jays would be this type of team, but... I'm trying to remember. You said for the wild card series, you had... I got all of them wrong. You got all of them wrong. I got all of them wrong. <laughs> Everyone you had wrong. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about... Braves Phillies. That is, it is the best series so far. Undoubtedly the best series that we have so far. So game one, Phillies weren't messing around. 3-0 came in, shut out the the best offense in uh, that maybe baseball has ever seen. And it was due to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pitchers. Suarez, three and two thirds, Hoffman a third. And then they had Dominguez, Alvarado, uh, Strom, Kim, all go one inning. Normally, the Phillies bullpen is the weakness of their team, but they've been shut down so far. And then, game, but game two, game two, they had it in the bag. They had game two in the bag, and they let it slip away, completely let it slip away. Gave up five runs over the last three innings against the Braves. And, of course, Michael Harris makes that incredible play to double off But Bryce, Bryce Harper, Harper with a rare, very bad mistake. Some are saying it was smart because, you know, he was, you know, trying to be aggressive and get all the way home. But, like, that situation, you can't go past second base. You get to second. You, you wait. Stop there. If he catches the ball, then you got to book your ass back to first, you know. But if he misses it, then you're still scoring, you know. Yeah. The only difference is, like, are you going to be sliding or standing up, you know. Like, that's the only difference that him going past second made. You know, he was so confident that he wasn't going to make the play. But it's like you can't be taking those kinds of risks in that situation, especially in the postseason. And, like, he of all people should know that, you know, especially coming in as, you know, from the wild card, uh, from the wild card series and everything, you know. So, like, he he should not have been being that risky. And I think he knows that as well. Yeah. My question for you becomes, does this change the trajectory of the series for you? I mean, here's the thing. Philly, I think, definitely has the the better pitching coming down the stretch here. Cause I, if I'm if I'm for me, I don't I don't like the pitchers that the Braves are gonna have going. Like, hold on, I need to, I need to actually. They might have Strider pitch game four. I don't know if they're actually gonna do that, but hold on. So tonight or no? So Wednesday? So today, Bryce Elder versus Aaron Nola. I would. Be very confident put in my chips in the Aaron Nola basket in that game. It's at the, the bank is going to be rocking. Absolutely rocking. I think the Phillies win tonight. And then it says Thursday is Spencer Strider versus Undecided for the Phillies. I, oof. Strider, I don't know. They might be pushing him a little bit. But at the same time, you got to put your best guys out there in what could be an eliminate. It's either going to be an elimination game or a winner game. Or win an advanced game. I uh, I don't know. I I actually would not be surprised if the Phillies win both these games, because it is hard as hell to win at the bank. It's hard, but I feel like with the end of that game, 
in Atlanta, like that crowd was pumped and that team was fired up. I feel like that that game right there, that ending, they were down, but they fought back yeah. and they got the win that they really needed. So I feel like that changes the entire trajectory of it. Because at first, when the think... Phillies getting the Phillies getting a win right off the bat on the road, like that is impressive and that's really tough to do. Like you said, especially against the the toughest offense probably in the history of the game and so i feel like that's the confidence boost that atlanta needed so i feel like it's going to be i think i think atlanta's going to take it i really think they do i feel like you think they take both in philly or i think they at least get one in philly you know i think if they get i think if they get one in philly they're winning game five philly has to win both these games in my opinion. Well, I mean, if they win both games and they win, obviously. But, but yeah. like, I would, like, Philly really, like, because if this goes five and they have to go back to Atlanta, Philly's not going to win. It's going to be really, really so hard. So they absolutely have to win these two games. I don't know. I I get what you're talking about, the Braves being piped up, but as soon as the Phillies walk into the bank, they're going to get that same energy. They're gonna but like that. I said earlier, you know, the playoffs are all about who is the hot right now i feel you like you can't that base mo- it off of I like f- one game i though. feel like that moment though is gonna be the moment where they go right on that hot streak that's just my prediction i'm not saying that, that the braves are hot right now i'm just saying like that moment getting that double play to end the game getting the crowd fired up getting themselves fired up that boosts so much confidence and so much energy in this team and then they're gonna remember yeah we got the best bats in the country we've got the mvp of the year in our lineup <laughs> right now We've got some of the best pitching in our rotation. So let's go out and let's go get the win. I think that's that's going to be the trajectory of this team. All right. Last series, Twins-Astros. So the Twins uh, beat the Blue Jays 3-1 and 2-0 in the wild card round and then marched into Houston and split the two games. They lost 6-4, 1-6-2, and then they came back home and got absolutely throttled 9-1. to That was a bad game. That was a very bad game. I'm hoping and praying to God that Minnesota can pull this off. So the Twins will have a, do, a win or go home game Thursday the 12th. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. Imagine if every single team in the final four. Actually, no, today. Today they play. Yeah, yeah, today. I got later it tonight. Imagine if every single <laughs> uh, team in the final four of this postseason all came from the wild card. Series. That would mean if, if that's the case, crazy. they got to get rid. They got to go back to the five and give the division with. Because like, because I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm just tripping, but like just that just, proves that you don't need the buy. Cause I'm telling you that week off after you've been playing hot mm-hmm. sucks. It does. Because and, you're just so eager to play playoff baseball. You're so eager to get to to get on the field, you know? So we'll see. Tonight's pitching rat matchup is Jose Urquidy, who's been rough this year, five point two ERA against Joe Ryan, who is the just epitome of average. Oh, I don't. I will see. I. Th- I would not be surprised if Minnesota rises to the occasion and goes back to Houston because they're they're a team. Despite losing that game, they're still playing some good ball. It's it's going to be so tough. Like I can definitely picture them winning, but like you said earlier with uh, with Philly, like. <sighs> It's going to be really tough for them to go back to Houston and win that, well, that game five. Not, it's going to be, you can't even be thinking about it. They just got to win tonight. Yeah. You can't be thinking about it because, yeah, they're they're one loss away from going home. But at the same time, if they're able to pull it off tonight, it's going to be so tough going back to Houston. It's going to be hard. We'll see. I'll I'll go out on a limb and say that the Twins win tonight because Jose Arquiti not a great pitcher. And Correa and Royce Lewis have been going off. And they'll get the, the bats will perform tonight. Game five, though. I don't know about that one. We'll see. Tickets are as low as forty-seven bucks for Game Five. Forty-seven dollars for Game Five. Get for Game Five at Houston. Jesus. Tickets are low as uh, fifty-six dollars for Game Four in Arizona if the Dodgers win tonight. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. We were uh, the baseball club that I'm in. We go to like Culver. We play wiffle ball every Friday and then go to Culver's. We were talking about getting Culver's to spot. Why have I not known about this? Wiffle ball sounds fucking awesome. You want to come? <laughs> I'll come. 
All right. I'm not going to be here this Friday <laughs> or the next Friday, but I'll be there. You should come. <laughs> uh, you should come. But we go to we go to Culver's afterwards, and we were talking about getting Culver's to sponsor us, <laughs> to sponsor our club, and have like a have like a Basque day at Culver's to where if uh to where we so like we're like we're gonna use the fundraising money to get to get us to go to the World Series or something like that. I was like, we could get intramural for our intramural softball team. We could put get like jerseys and put Culvers in the back, and then they could have our our picture in the uh, like with all the other little league teams. Start a meal, like get a um, an IU baseball. I pitched meal. it to the to the guy that's like the president of our club. He goes, "That's a terrific idea. I just cannot see Culvers giving like five hundred bucks to a bunch of college kids." He's like, I just don't see that. That's happening. a great point, though. He's like, <laughs> like, these guys are gonna spend it on booze. Like, it's a fun idea, on. but at the same time, yeah, that's we, probably not gonna happen. Yeah, but yeah, you should definitely. I'll let you know next time we go. I'm not. I think they're doing it this Friday, but I'm not gonna be there because I'm going. I'm not gonna be there either. I'm going home for fall break tomorrow. So, I it's time for college football. I.